Happy Friday. How you doing? Well, hey, Sanford, I said I was going to get to you. Yeah, I heard about how you went out driving around without a license showing yourself. You're not worried about being shown driving without a license. You know the worst you'll get is a fucking ticket, you know. <laughs> uh, I think you've done this before. I guess you're really scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel for content. Now you're going to go back to... This big conspiracy by automakers, you know. They're holding back on new cars. They want to push used cars on. You go by their lot. So look, all these used cars. Oh, there's not many new cars. And now they try to ram electric cars down your throat and they're death traps. They're going to blow up. Through the decades, how many gasoline-powered cars have caught fire in a garage due to a gas leak, electrical shot, oil leak? How many have been hit on the side of a fucking road and fucking, they go up in flames because of the gasoline that's, uh, you know, likes to burn <laughs> when it comes to, into contact with heat or spark An electrical shot. Oh no, you don't want to talk about that. Okay. Listen, nothing is perfect in this world. You know, these Teslas are, are not... Blowing up every fucking day and killing people and burning people's houses down. It's very random, sporadic events that happen with any other gasoline-powered vehicle. But it gets blown up. Makes headline news. I have a very good friend, man. And I felt bad for this poor bastard. He had a really nice 1970 Corvette. Real nice. Used to win trophies in car shows with this thing. It was a 454. You know. And he had a 64 GTO ragtop, fully restored. In his garage at his house. And he had taken the GTO out, and uh, I guess his fuel line had a little bit of a leak in it. It started leaking gas. And uh, something happened while he was awake camping. Next thing you know, he gets a phone call. His house is on fire. Both cars burnt right down to the fucking frames. <laughs> house went up. Wasn't an electric car that torched his fucking house and destroyed his, his cars, you know? That didn't make national fucking news. If it had been a Tesla, I'm quite sure somebody would have made a big fucking deal out of it, you know what I mean? <laughs> this shit happens all the time, Stanford. But then again, you've always been known to like to throw scare tax tactics into people. Gets you attention, gets you content, gets you views, you know. And when you said, you know, uh, the American doll was dead, crypto, Bitcoin was going to take over the fucking world. What happened with that shit? What I understand there's a lot of corruption and fraud involved with that. People have lost their life savings. People are being charged. You know, we still have paper money. <laughs> Don't invest in gold, invest in silver. What happened with that theory of yours? It was that $15 a gallon gas you said was coming. We're paying three twenty-five here right now. You know, all your predictions. It's just to throw a scare into people. It's a very old fucking tactic. Nothing new. Nothing you do is new. It's just rehashed, regurgitated shit that people have been done. From shock jocks like Howard Stern to Man Cow to TV. Talk show host. You know, just throw out propaganda. Throw a scare into people and they get a viewership. That's what it comes down to. Some ways it can be called marketing, and that's what I'm going to get into, marketing. You know, I did, trying to, I don't know if any of you recall, a couple of years back, I did a video with my buddy Bobby Tasker at one of his Tasker dealerships. Uh, this was the one in East Providence. He's got a few here in New England. And I was there with him in the lot. Remember, he was showing you all the empty spaces. He sells Mazdas too, Ford and Mazda. Showing all the empty spots, he says. I'm waiting on cars. I can't get them fast enough. These cars are sold before they come in. People come in. I want this, this, and that. Okay, I got one coming in. It won't be until for three weeks or a month. They give their down payment, arrange the financing. They're just waiting on their fucking car. You know, and he was showing them all the empty spots. In both Fords and Mazda. Said at one time, my lot was packed with new cars. We can't get them fast enough. The auto industry is doing very well. That's why these auto... Hey, Mike, you might want to listen to this. That's why these auto workers are on strike. Because they're getting paid shit. Or well, their profits 
through the fucking roof. Highest profits, I think, of all time in the auto industry, in every manufacturer. These CEOs are not only making $40, $50 million a year at Christmas time, they're writing themselves a $100 million bonus check. Merry Christmas to me. You know, auto workers, you know, they're not making $50, $60, $70 an hour. You know, a lot of them are working for $12, $13 an hour. Some of the highest paid might be $32. You've taken away from their health care, not contributing to their 401ks as much. They're really sticking it to the workers. Or their CEOs and the upper administration, multi, multi, multi millionaires. That's why they're on strike. I don't blame them. It's not like they're poor and can't afford it. It's pure fucking corporate greed. That's what's taking this country over. Pure corporate greed. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. No president, regardless of whether they're a Republican or a Democrat, no senator, congressman, Nobody can tell a gas station what they got to sell their gas for. I can tell a supermarket what they have to sell their food for. That's out of their control. That's our free enterprise capitalistic system. That's something a government cannot control. And that's how our economy is based on. How willing they are to give a little back to the people. Or how greedy they choose to be. Everybody lost a lot of money during COVID. Now they want to recoup. <laughs> you know, where's it going to come from? Me, you, and the workers. You know. I know a little bit about the auto industry, Sanford. Maybe you should have finished fucking high school, for one thing. <laughs> you might know a little bit more than you know now, and right now you don't know shit, so anything would have been a fucking vast improvement over the fucking ignorance that you possess at this moment. You know what's funny about people? People that are intelligent don't need to tell you they're intelligent. It just shows. <laughs> People that are dumb fucks, you know they're a dumb fuck. <laughs> it shows. Uh, but you like to tell people how fucking smart you are, and all you're showing is how fucking ignorant you are. Hoping that people won't realize how ignorant you are, and they'll believe your bullshit about how you think you're so fucking smart, you know. I sent both my daughters to college, Arizona State. That's how I got that ASU hat. I showed it yesterday with my name embroidered on it. Both my daughters, they were a year apart. I sent both of them to Arizona State. My little daughter went first. My younger daughter went the following year. Once they both got there, hey, Dad, you should come out here, come out here. That's how I ended up out there, and that's how I met Auntie Billy. Over a period of time, I got homesick. They got homesick. Auntie Billy, she came, you know. I'm glad she did, you know. My oldest daughter got her degree in biology, chemistry, microbiology, and biochemistry. She works for the state police, evidence examination, forensics, CSI shit. She loved that show, CSI. She hated it when Grissom left the show. She was pissed. <laughs> That's why she got into that. She does very well. My oldest daughter, business and marketing, got her degree. She got a job with a the Empire Auto Group. They own three big four dealerships in New England, two Hyundai and two Kia dealerships. And they hired her as their marketing agent. She handled all their, inter their internet marketing sales, radio, TV promotions. She even did radio ads with local radio stations. She did the voices, TV commercials. She starred in the TV commercials that dealerships pointing out things. She traveled around quite a bit, and she got heavily involved. And uh, she moved on with the company. Well, I'll spare you all of the details of her chain of advancement. She became the manager, overseeing all these dealerships. We talk, I know things. The auto industry is doing very well, as far as sales, profits. They've been taking away a lot of, and not just GM, you know, Ford. Ford, though, has been pretty decent with their workers. They made concessions and they gave in. I don't know what's going on with Chrysler too much. GM's been the big sticking point where they're really sticking to their fucking greed, you know. And, uh... 
She was dead. And believe it or not, dealers, even competitors, they all communicate. They have a database. Everybody knows what's going on with everybody. They work out a lot of internal deals, car swaps. Um, the big thing right now is in leasing. Dealers like leasing because most people won't buy the car at the end of their lease. They just return it. Take a two, three-year lease on a car, they get it back. The person has paid a good amount of money on a monthly payment into a lease. They've already made some money on the car. They can put it on the lot and not care about so much a big markup on it now. Because they got more than their markup already. Got the hiccups at the front end of the deal. Low mileage, good condition. If the car's damaged, they've gone over the mileage. Now that person pays a penalty. Either way, they don't lose money. Then the car gets resold. They don't lose money. You know? Every manufacturer, every dealer right now is having a hard time keeping their lot stocked. They can't get these cars fast enough. The buying public is buying a lot of new cars. A lot of lease vehicles are being returned. A lot of dealerships that do their own in-house financing, like right through Ford, right through GM, right through Chrysler. Uh, there are a lot of repossessions that come back. They end up back at the deal where they were sold. What? Hey, Sanford, what are they supposed to do with these fucking cars? Hide them? Don't put these cars out on a fucking lot. we got to hide them. We only want new cars on a new car dealership lot. Can't have used cars on here. Can't have repossessed cars. Can't have lease return cars. No, 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 no. Fuck's the matter with you? The fuck's the matter with you? And also, you drive by a car lot, and you see 10 or 12 new cars, and it's a big fucking lot, 10 or 12, you're like, huh? You don't have anything to choose from. You'll keep right on driving. They see a lot of stock with cars. They look nice, the late model cars, different makes, whatever. Even trainers. They're supposed to hide them. That will attract people to a lot. Maybe they can't afford that new car at $65,000, but they'll see one on a lot, and even if it's a different manufacturer, it was a trade-in. It's in good condition, low miles. They were offering a decent warranty on it. Uh, they'll buy it. Hey, Sanford, why the fuck do you think these new car dealerships are in business? To sell fucking cars. Whatever car they get on a lot that's good, that's good quality, the ones that junk, my daughter, she even tells me, Stuff that, you know, the, you know these ones you see will give you $2,000 even if you told what they know where these cars end up, right? They end up at fucking auction. You know what I mean? Cars they take in on trade-ins that they're kind of okay, but they got, you know, shit order miles on them. They end up at auction. These cars they don't want on their lot. They end up at auction. That's the ones you see on these little rinky-dink mom-and-pop used car lots, 30-day warranty, and they're, you know, hoping that person will come back. Until the 31st day, you know what I mean? They're selling them cheap because they got them cheap at auction. What's the matter with you, Sanford? What's the matter with you? Look at all these used cars. More, Yeah. That dealer would love to have more brand new cars on his lot. They can't fucking get them fast enough. The auto manufacturers know that. That's why they're pushing their workers harder and harder and harder and harder. You're not giving them anything, 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 anything while they reap the fucking profits. Sanford, really, you should have stayed in high school. <laughs> I guess your only experience in car lots, the car business, has been flipping old junk cars, potting out old junk cars, being involved in chop shop operation with switch VIN tags, forged titles, you know, while you had to hightail it out of fucking New York along with other issues with losing your license. Uh, you really don't know shit about the car business. So why the fuck are you running your mouth to me? Look at this, look at this. You needed content, you needed to throw a fucking scare tactic into people, you needed to push your bullshit conspiracy theory propaganda onto people. And that's why you did that. Because you've had a fucking inkling of a clue of what goes on in the auto sales business. You would have shut the fuck up. You would have shut the fuck up. But you didn't shut the fuck up. That's why now I am not shutting the fuck up. And I'm letting you know how full of fucking shit you are. And how that whole bit was just to get fucking views to a scare tactic into people. Put out another one of your fucking batshit crazy conspiracy theories.
yeah. <laughs> Did I make it clear enough for you? Huh? Try by a lot. Oh, all these used cars. Yeah. They're there because the dealer wants to sell them. It's a new car dealership, but they have used cars that are good quality that don't go to auction. They'll put them on a lot. They get lease return vehicles. They get repossessions at times. What are they supposed to do with them, Sanford? What are they supposed to do with these cars? Hide them from the public? Take them and crush them? This new car dealership is only supposed to sell new fucking cars? Where the fuck you been all your life? I've seen a lot of new car dealerships throughout my fucking life. I've always seen used cars on a fucking lot. Now suddenly you got a fucking problem with it? Dude, y'all... Dude, you're fucked up, man. Between you and this Mopar Mad Bad Mike, yeah, two of you get together? Well, I don't think you would. He don't like you. I have to assume you don't like him. And I don't like the both of you. <laughs> I guess that makes us all even. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Have fun and stay safe. I'll catch up with you again.